Okay, so um, again, we have a small change to the um, published uh, program. Um, so MASH, uh, who are going to talk to us about how to extract value from fintech trends, uh, unfortunately, James could not be here, so instead we have Jerome Dave. Oh, Jerome is already here. Well done. Give me a chance. How are you? Nice to meet you. Thank you. Good luck. The time is down there, and uh, yeah. Thank you very much. Hello, everyone. So my name is Jerome Dave. I work for MASH Company, International Development, and apologize for James Sixon, our CEO. He could not make it on time today. So our message today, or the message we want to convey, is um, around a, a few fintech trends that we experience ourselves or witness in our space and that we would like to share with you with either very practical example or uh, illustration of some solution that take advantage of it. In okay. I can start. So to set the scene, uh, some context around the, the amount of capital, thank you, the amount of capital that has been deployed and invested within the, the fintech space over the course of 2018. Uh, we hit a, a record high uh, in 2018 by uh, globally close to $40 billion investment. This is a massive amount of capital deployed in the fintech. Uh, the, the top of the iceberg is, you know, we, we often hear about those challenger bank, you know, B2C, Neobank, etc. But there is a lot of, uh, a lot of more happening in, in the background, also in the B2B space, when it's come to provide solution for payment or financial services uh, as well as added value services for merchants. Interesting to, to note as well that uh, unfinancial uh, on its own accounted for 35% of those $40 billion. That's a massive amount we can expect uh, a wave of innovation from, from China in, in the next few years. Um, to start with a first trend around engagement. So engagement for us is uh, more about data. And if I look at those intelligent chatbots that are available today on some uh, public, uh, uh, public platforms such as Facebook. Uh, this is fine, but we also believe that it has some limitation. Limitation is that everything which will happen through those chatbots in terms of data are owned by Facebook. You don't own those data. So we believe in a white label uh, intelligent chatbot solution that will, um, that will benefit you in, in two ways. The first way is that you will own the data, and everybody knows how data are important nowadays. And the second is that you will be able to deploy this, this uh, chatbot solution on any of your solution or any of your channel, being Slack, being Salesforce, or any other type of customer relationship management. The, the second trend in terms of, uh, or the, the, the second point in terms of, of engagement is um, also what, what we experience um, uh, with PSD2 and open uh, banking API. Reading banking transaction uh, today give us a new data set where we can further master and, uh, and, understand, and get insight from our customer and how they behave and, and also purchasing pattern. Uh, thing is, is one, of, one example where they add a layer of personal fi finance management that all the banks 
uh, now where they provide as added value services to, to their customer in order to, to drive engagement by uh, making, making recommendation or providing deeper insight that, that would take you hours to, uh, to deal with. Second trend around loyalty and rewards. This is not new. This is not new. But it's, from our perspective, it's more important than ever. There is such a competitive, uh, such a competitive uh, uh, environment nowadays. And also because the importance of, of the data and engaging with, the, with, with your customer. Reward loyalty is an additional way to engage actively with, uh, and directly with, uh, with, with your customer. Those, the data that you will capture via uh, loyalty or reward program are also very important to gain additional insight about your customer, uh, but also about their preference and to timely deliver those, uh, those, those, those rewards, for instance, or, or prompt uh, uh, some, uh, uh, some initiative to their, to their attention. What will probably be the, the main uh, uh, differentiating factor will be the simplicity. We believe that there is a great need for simplicity in the current uh, loyalty program that we see in the market. And it's even more true when we think about, when you think or target the millennials. Third trend, um, purchasing a shift to subscription model or, or pay as you go. This is not new either. Um, it started a while back, uh, mainly in the, the B2B space with, uh, with, uh, with cloud computing, service as a software, and more recently in the B2C with the, the Netflix and the, the, the Spotify. What is really interesting is that those models that have huge implication of your operating model, etc., that's for sure, but it, it creates some intimacy between your customer and your business. And the, re the main reason is the shift from the product to the customer relationship. You will, you will stop resonating in terms of uh, how many products uh, will, I uh, will I sell this month, etc. No, you will resonate in terms of customer, customer lifetime and customer retention, which, which uh, which also will uh, drive uh, or create additional data set where that, that, you will benefit, uh, that you will benefit over time. Pay later solution. That's also another trend. It is quite well known, I think, in Germany, payment on invoice, but also in, in the Nordics. Pay later solution help you to, to defer uh, the, the moment of, of payment. So it, 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 it increased the purchase power of your customer, if you are a merchant or consumer, it increased the purchase power of the consumer at the point of sale, at the moment of truth. It, so it increased the conversion, but it also increased the basket side. It increased the basket side because they are often coupled with credit solution, Deferring the payment is also a credit in itself because you can, you, you, you can count on the treasury you have today, but you can also count on, on future income if the moment the, the payment is, is transferred. To illustrate that, the MASH pay later solution. So, Mash pay later solution is uh, a way for customers to pay on their terms at a later stage, whether they purchase online or in store on the, the payment terminal. So, very, very simple, uh, very quickly. So, as a customer, you go to the point of sales, you, you, you want to you purchase whatever a smartphone. 
on the point of sale, on the, on the terminal itself, you will enter um, either, depending on the country, your ID number or social security number. You will enter on the path as well your, your phone number. And then uh, within a time frame which is as a, a short as a credit card payment, we will do KYC IML. Uh, credit and the writing, and we will send a response back to the terminal uh, authorizing the order. We could reject it. I think it's about 80% plus acceptance rate. Then you will go home with that item or service, and you will have a grace period, two weeks, six weeks, maybe more, depending on the case, to decide how you want to pay. Do you want to pay now in full? and the transaction will be tot completely settled and at no fee? Or do you want to enter into a repayment plan or a revolving line of credit and, and, and pay later on, on, on some specific terms? Financing, financing for especially for uh, uh, small and mid-sized businesses is also a, a trend. There is a gap today uh, in terms of getting access for small and medium-sized businesses. That gap is uh, partly created by the complexity of underwriting uh, a, a small or medium-sized uh, merchant it's particularly difficult to get access to a credit uh, below 250,000, and, and I think 75% of it is actually below 100,000. Uh, banks still retain most of, of, of that market, uh, but, but we can also count on, on some uh, new player, non-bank lenders, that will start leveraging new new set of data, such as the banking transaction of, of those merchants. And that could uh, process a credit underwriting in a, if not instantly, in a shorter period of time that a bank would do uh, uh, today. To illustrate that, uh, a MASH uh, merchant cash advance model would be very high level as follows. So, Basically, three sources of information. The, the first one would be to, to score the, the owner of that business. The second data point would be to, to leverage the, the transaction we can read on his bank account. And the third one would be his payment history and basically his turnover. It is, it is also, um, it is for us, you know, this model enables us to know before the merchant and certainly before the banks to know what will be, uh, what is his turnover, what is he, uh, even maybe his profitability, even before he releases his, his, uh, his financial account, etc. So we instantly know and, and on an ongoing basis on how the merchant business is performing, which also allows us to process very quickly uh, an underwriting, a credit underwriting decision, uh, but also to, to adapt the credit limit and maybe to help him. It's also a way for PSP, for instance, to, to leverage their, their data set uh, and their, their merchant portfolio by maybe uh, adding added value services such as a merchant cash advance. Uh, and also maybe uh, improving the merchant retention ratio. Uh, so I think that, uh, for instance, uh, provide a win-win situation, win for the merchant in terms of treasury, win for the PSP, win for, for the lenders. China as a purchasing force, another trend. So we earlier I started with the amount of investment for man and financial in the, the fintech space over the course of 2018. It's also 250 million Chinese tourists that will travel uh, in, to Europe uh, uh, between now and, and 2025. One Chinese tourist will spend about, during his trip in Europe, will spend about 1.3, 1.5 thousand euros. 
If you want, as a merchant, to size that opportunity, and also for PSP and others to uh, provide adequate service, we need to accept their payment method too, being Alipay and financial or, or WeChat Pay. Recently, we have seen some very concrete uh, uh, movement in that space, so uh, and financial uh, apply for a payment license in Luxembourg and also make the acquisition of uh, world, world one, one of the, the, the remittance, uh, remittance and FX business in, in, in Europe. If I, um, uh, if I remind uh, correctly, it is a world remit. So as a conclusion, the storyline was about improving customer experience and customer satisfaction by leveraging data. It's, all, it's not only your data, it's also about partnering with the overall payment ecosystem, merchant payment ecosystem, and leveraging the data from, from your partner. Um, so Mash will, is here at the boot, and if you want more information, about solution or partnership or any of those models, I would be happy to, to answer your question. Thank you. Thanks very much, Jerome. Thank you very much.